When you get down to it, the story of JoJo's is about one thing, the Joestar family's eternal fight against evil. In honor of the Joestars, we're gonna cover their family tree, uh, Brando's included, of course. And just like last time, we'll be keeping it anime only, and I'm not sorry because a lot of people haven't read the manga yet. So y'all lead us, just chill. All right, we'll, we'll be fine, we'll get through this. We'll just be back in 2030 for the revised family tree. It's fine. And yes, that also means we're not getting into any of the weird spin-off stuff. Uh, sorry, George Joe Star, you're a little too boring. We'll be covering the anime, including the ending of part five. So there's your spoiler warning. George Joe Star. Not that George that we literally just said we weren't gonna talk about, that would have been weird. No, uh, Jonathan's dad, George Joestar. We don't know when he was born, but he definitely died in 1888, uh, rest in peace. If you can't believe it, the Joestars weren't always super badass warriors. George was pretty much your run of the mill, fancy pants English aristocrat. Until one night, he and his wife, Mary, are riding along in their carriage with their infant son, Jonathan. Unfortunately, their carriage crashes and Mary dies. When George comes to, he sees Dario Brando and mistakenly assumes this creepy looking guy saved his life when he was actually trying to rob their corpses. George is so grateful that he gives Dario Dario enough money to open a hotel. He even backs Dario up when he gets caught selling the ring he stole from Mary's corpse. As if that wasn't kind enough, George goes as far as to adopt Dario's son, Dio, after Dario finally kicks the bucket. All because Dario tried a little corpse thievery at just the right moment. The Honorable George Joestar raises both Jonathan and Dio to be strong young men, but eventually his utter obliviousness to true evil gets the better of him. After Dio nearly poisons him, George sacrifices himself to save Jonathan and gets stabbed by Dio. Like, it's a sad ending, but if you couldn't tell that Dio was evil, oh, he kinda had it coming. RP George Joestar, um, I have nothing to pour out, so uh, spray one out of uh, Ultra Lens Cleaner, not sponsored. Stop, you're wasting it. <laughs> Jonathan takes up the Joestar mantle from there. Before we can continue, we have to circle back to Dario Brando, uh, you know, uh, the corpse looter. Born 1827, dies 1880. Dario's basically the polar opposite of George Joestar. He's the kind of man to take advantage of whatever situation he's in. When he finds the Joestar's carriage crash, he's hell-bent on looting anything he can find. After George wakes up, Dario lets him believe that he rescued him and proceeds to hold that over George for the rest of his life. And you'd think Dario would make the most of this situation, you know, some kind, dumb man giving you all his cash. Uh, but no, he just spends it all on booze as, you know, corpse looters do. Not only that, uh, but he worked his own wife to death and regularly beats the hell out of his son, Dio. Yeah, father of the year. Dio does get payback by poisoning Dario to death, and honestly, who can blame him? Before Dario dies, he makes arrangements for Dio to be adopted by George Joestar. And Dio, naturally, jumps at the opportunity to murder him. Dio poisons his evil dad and gets to play little orphan Annie to George Joestar's daddy Warbucks. Sure, at this point in the story, the moral is that evil always wins, but something is about to awaken in the Joestar bloodline that's gonna change everything. Jonathan Joestar, born 1868, died 1889. Ah, yes, here we go, the first true JoJo. Just like George, Jonathan's a good egg, except the main difference that he's not stupid, you know, and kind of knows that Dio might be not the best person. Maybe it was after he killed his dog. Who knows? Once Dio shows up, Jonathan sees right through his adopted brother's tricks and recognizes that he's a bad guy. I mean, burning Jonathan's dog alive is a dead giveaway. But since George is convinced that Dio is a sweet little angel, Jonathan has to put up with this monster for the next seven years. Once Jonathan exposes Dio for the asshole he is, he goes on a hunt to kill the newly turned vampire, establishing the Joestar family tradition of slaying evil. Along the way, he learns the breath power known as Hamon from Will Antonio Zeppeli. He even reunites with Arena, his childhood love. After defeating Dio, or so he thinks, he and Arena tie the knot and take a Joestar family cruise. Turns out that Dio's severed head survives and he manages to mortally wound Jonathan. To stop him once and for all, Jonathan destroys the boat, ensuring the safety of his family. Jonathan dies, cradling Dio's pissed off head in his arms. Jonathan, you did your best, buddy, even if you're not as successful as your other descendants. I'm gonna spray one out for you, homie. It's finally time. Dio Brando, born 1868, dies 1989. Being the son of a corpse looter, Dio didn't really have the best life. 
So naturally, uh, he decides to be the most evil person in history. Honestly, you have to respect anyone who sets goals and achieves them, even if that goal is to become an immortal vampire who preys on humanity. After using the mysterious stone mask to become a vampire, Dio attempts to establish a firm base of power. But after a tough fight, Jonathan defeats him once and for all. Or at least for a little while. Dio is still kinda immortal, and so his severed head kills Jonathan and takes his body. That makes him like sort of a Joe Star, right? Like the blood's mixed, like it, it works. We're gonna roll with it. A hundred years later, he's pulled up from the ship he sank in and reestablishes himself in Egypt. Now with a powerful stand, Zawada. Unfortunately for him, his stand's activation causes the rest of the Joe Star family to power up as well. But we'll get to that in a second. Next, we've got Erina Pendleton Joestar. Born 1869, dies 1950. No vampires, no homo. Erina is just a young girl from the English countryside. Jonathan saves her from bullies when they're kids, setting their relationship in motion. Dio decides to pull a Dio and steals her first kiss, and she's too embarrassed to see Jonathan after that. She had to India with her father for the next few years, possibly doing some nasty colonial stuff since this was in the late 1800s, and eventually she returns to England and becomes a nurse, reuniting with Jonathan and treating his injuries after his first battle with Dio. After Jonathan stops Dio for good, he and Erina get married and have a kid. You know this. But when Jonathan destroys the ship to stop Dio's head, Erina escapes and adopts the only other survivor on the ship, a baby girl. Eventually, she helps raise her grandson, Joseph, and is well known as a strong woman who lives a long life. Frankly, for a Joe Star, she has an incredibly kind fate. Uh, maybe it's the Joe Star blood that's the problem. The one no one cares about. George Joe Star II, born 1889, dies 1921. As for her son, George II, He's a great example of how badly life can go for a Joe star. George was sitting nice and peacefully inside Erina's womb when Jonathan was killed and never lives the life that he deserved. Sure, he joins the British Air Force, but he never learns homon. So once he discovers that his superior officer is a vampire, he's D-E-A-D -E dead. Sorry, buddy. Seems it's just the fate of George's to die horribly to vampires. Cue the sad music. Really, George's greatest contribution to the series is spitting out Joseph and being plot fodder for Joseph. So you get like a little, like a baby, like a little, like a, right, still too much. A little bit back, you're okay. Whatever, we're gonna move on. Next, Elizabeth Lisa Lisa Joestar, born 1888, dies, we're not too sure. As a baby, Lisa Lisa had the bad luck of being on the same boat as Dio's head. At least she had the good luck of surviving. After Erina saves Lisa, she sends her to live with Straitso, a renowned master of homo. Eventually, she gets together with George and they have a son, Joseph. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time that a really badass girl got with a pretty meh guy. I mean, think of, any anime protagonist. When George gets killed by one of Dio's old vampire thralls, Lisa Lisa leaves her home and uses her hormone training to take revenge. Trouble is, killing an officer in the British Air Force might be a bad look. So the always useful Speedwagon Foundation hides Lisa Lisa and gives her a new identity. In time, she comes to be the teacher of Will Zeppeli's grandson, Caesar Zeppeli, as well as Joseph, her own son, even though he had no idea that his hot teacher was his mom. Edder, can we get the, can I get a nice? Nice! Nice! Oh, <laughs> not that nice, homie, that's your mother. <laughs> Together they fight and defeat the last of a dangerous race known as the Pillar Men. If you want more info on them, refer to our JoJo's Bizarre Adventure anime timeline. That video took forever, so please watch it. I died making that. With the world safe, Lisa Lisa is free to settle down at long last, living out the rest of her days in peace. Uh, is this our first old age? Good one. Pour one out for old age death. Kind of lame, but healthy. So I'll take it. Finally, my boy, Joseph Joestar, born 1920, dies. I think he's still alive, but we're not too sure. He's really old. Oh my God. Here we go. Everyone's favorite lovable scamp, Joseph Joestar himself. With George II dead and Lisa Lisa in hiding, Erna and Speedwagon raise Joseph in their stead. Over time, he learns to use his inherited hormone powers, which really come in handy when the Pillar Men awaken. Now Joseph has to battle against a threat even greater than Dio. With his trademark ingenuity, in good humor, he defeats the Pillar Men. Shortly after the battle, he gets married to Susie Q. Over the coming years, they have a daughter, Holly Joestar, who eventually gives them a grandson, Jotaro Kujo. But by the time Joseph's in 
minus 60s, the era of peace has ended. Deals back and now in all capital letters. Joseph has to stop him now with the power of his newly awakened stand, Hermit Purple. Honestly, Hermit Purple is unreasonably weak given how cool Joseph is, but he brings some buddies along on the adventure to help out, the Stardust Crusaders. It's a long, tough journey, but the gang finally catches up to Dio in Egypt. Dio almost kills Joseph, but Jotaro saves him at the last second by having medics transfuse Dio's blood into him and restarting his heart. The color returns to his face, the light returns to his eyes, and he lives on to cheat on his wife. Well, actually, Josuke was born before that, but I'm sure he did some cheating afterward. So it's fine. His illegitimate son, Josuke, stays in Japan and has his own battle against evil stand users. Joseph stops by to meet him and things are pretty awkward, but while he's in Japan, he adopts the invisible baby, Shizuka Joestar, causing his wife to chew him out once again. Next up is Holly Joestar Kujo, born 1942, dies we're not too sure. Joseph and Suzy Q's daughter, Holly, is mind-bendingly sweet, though she lacks the hot bloodedness that gives most of the Joe stars their power. As a result, she stays out of the major conflicts. She moves to Japan to live with her husband and watch over her son, Jotaro. Considering how gruff that boy is when we first meet him, you know Holly is an absolute angel. When Dio awakens, she also develops a stand like the other Joe stars, but she's unable to properly control it due to her lack of strength. As a result, she succumbs to a great illness, fueling the Crusader's quest to defeat Dio and save her. In the end, they're successful and Holly returns to her old cheery self. Next up, my boy Jotaro Kujo, born 1970. There's nothing here. Oh, it's because he's not dead. He's not dead. Jotaro grew up as a normal Japanese heartthrob and eventually became a delinquent, a, a fate for most Joe stars. When he's 17, he gets into a fight with a group of gang members and utterly pulverizes them. Like, Jotaro's a tough kid, but I'm talking about a straight up slaughter. Jotaro beats them so bad he thinks he's been possessed by an evil spirit. So he turns himself into the police and stays locked up. Once Joseph arrives, the truth is made clear. Jotaro actually just gained a stand, Star Platinum whose power is to punch things. At Joseph's request, Jotaro joins the Stardust Crusaders to stop Dio and save his mom. Cold and unfriendly, Jotaro is not the Joker his grandfather is, but he still has the same sense of justice that's been passed down through his entire line. In his fight against Dio, he realizes that Star Platinum has the power to freeze time, just like the world. So he turns the tables on Dio and finally kills him. And then he goes home and gets a doctorate after writing a thesis about starfish. Does this mean that he's become a marine biologist? This boy saves the world. He deserves a break. Except Jotaro is so cool, he doesn't need a break. He's still investigating the Stan arrow that gave Dio his stand in the first place. He helps out with all the future Stan problems, including helping Josuke's group in Morio and sending Koichi to check up on Giorno in Naples. Oh yeah, and never forget, Starfish. <laughs> now we got Josuke Higashikata, born 1983. I'm pretty sure he's not dead. That would be really sad. Poor Josuke, he's almost got it as bad as George II. He hates his father, Joseph, for treating his oddly attractive mother so poorly, but I don't blame him. As a kid, Josuke gets an intense fever that nearly kills him. It's a lot like the fever Holly got when Dio awakened the Joestar stands. When his mom is driving him to the hospital, their car gets stuck in the snow, but a young man with a pompadour appears and helps them get free, saving Josuke's life. From here on, Josuke Josuke has the same self-sacrificing spirit as the rest of his family, as well as a love for pompadours, which you better not insult. Josuke's stand eventually develops healthily into Crazy Diamond, which also punches things, but also puts them back together. Just like Jotaro, he becomes a delinquent, though a relatively kind one who makes friends easily. After his grandpa is killed, Josuke is determined to protect his hometown of Morio from any and all evil. The evil this time just happens to be a bunch of rotten stand users. Along the way, he manages to become best of buds with a couple of fellow stand users. So who can say it's all that bad. I mean, sir, yes, some people got murdered along the way, but those murders sparked friendship. So I see it as a net positive. Josuke and his friends face off against the serial killer Yoshikage Kira and his stand, Killer Queen. With the murder of all murderers out of the way, Morio returns to peace and tranquility. Josuke even learns to stop hating his father along the way, though he did get some revenge by stealing his wallet. Real Dario Brando move there. Josuke. Finally, Giorno Giovanna, born 1985, and he's not dead yet. Look, I love Giorno, but he's like the broken branch on this family tree that's barely hanging on. See, he's actually Dio's son, but Dio stole Jonathan's body a while back, and I feel like I don't have to explain this, but the whole baby making part is 
below the neck. So yeah, that's how Giorno has Joestar blood. His hair was originally that familiar Joestar black, but it eventually turned blonde because Deal's vampire magic works in mysterious ways, I guess. And I should give Josuke a break. Giorno really had it rough. Growing up, Giorno faced constant neglect from his mother and was abused by his stepfather. And his real father was not around, obviously. He was dead. The only one who ever looked out for him was a gangster that Giorno protected. Like with Josuke, this early encounter inspired Giorno's passion for justice, like a true Joestar. See, Giorno Giovanna has a dream, a dream to become a gangstar and use the mafia to help others instead of hurting them. To realize his dream, Giorno ends up pitted against the rising Passion gang, which has an assortment of stand users. Thankfully, Giorno has a stand of his own gold experience. Over a wild week and a half, Giorno teams up with Bruno Bucciarati squad and defeats the leader leader of Passion, unlocking Gold Experience Requiem in the process. It's basically an advanced version of his sand, which is practically unbeatable. And so Giorno finally becomes a gang star and turns Passion into a compassionate gang, which helps those in need. Of course, the Joe Star line doesn't stop with Giorno, but this is an anime only video, so we'll have to save the best Joe Star for another time. I won't even give you a hint as to who she is, just know she'll do her best to stop the forces of evil, because that's what a Joe Star does. And we're again the robot, your anime explainer, and that's what we do. I'm Kurt, that's what I do, because that's my name. And be sure to subscribe, and that's what you should do. Please.